Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our What's Up Doc Live this midweek. So it's Wednesday, April 28, 2021. Our topic for today is about low carb foods, including not just low car not just carbohydrates, but also fats, proteins, calories, and nutrients. So low carb nutrition is not just about carbohydrates. We also must know the importance of the kinds of fats, the amount of proteins, if calories are that, that essential, and how important is the nutrient density of each low-carb meal that you're going to consume, okay? So it's not just simply lowering your carbohydrate, but also making sure you still have your daily nutrient requirement more than calories actually nutrients in each each food is more important okay so we have we have to emphasize that although calorie of course is also important and even if you want to lose your weight and you want to lower your calorie intake it's also not good to lower it too much so lowering carbohydrate or calories from carbohydrate is important but the total calorie intake need not be that small as compared to your BMR or basal metabolic rate. Otherwise, you might go into metabolic problems with lowering of your metabolism if you will do that for so long. So it's really important that you know what is your BMR. You don't need to count calories up to the last number but it is important for you to be familiar be familiarized or at least know which foods that are in our low carb food list are actually very very high in calories and the ones that are also somewhat devoid of calories so that you can strike a balance between which foods will be included in your meal and which foods will be taken into moderation okay because anything too much or too little is never good so if you have questions regarding that topic you may put them in the comment section i know last monday we weren't able to finish all of our questions but this time you have the opportunity and i hope we can finish all of your queries so hello christy tata mary ann sugar miyazaki zl lu good evening eileen jong maria lourdes nilio Amabel Colina Jaime, thank you so much, always. And Sir Romeo Yi Braca. Gina de Guzman Meneses, watching from India, hello. Bea Bersenas, so I've been diagnosed with gout and I need to lose weight. I know keto will help me, but how do I start? So we have a YouTube video on how to start a low carb journey and incorporation of intermittent fasting. So with gout, you might experience flares of gouty attacks actually when you are fasting and if you are doing very, very high protein diet with keto, or with low carb nutrition. So what's important is you take the necessary steps to make sure that your uric acid won't be that high and also you make sure that you hydrate well. So try to look into our YouTube channel, it's there. Uh, how to start a beginner's beginner's guide for low carb and intermittent fasting. I hope it can help you It's just a few minutes video, but it can some somewhat give you an idea on how to start. Okay, so we have Immediately Christina Magno from the Spinias novella Okay, so I think we're live now. Sorry for the interruption. I don't know what happened and sorry we have to write again your questions if you have questions for today sorry for that I'm not sure what happened a while ago but I'm sh I hope this one is better so hi again we are live for those of you who are still in the previous video it was accidentally cut off but in here I hope this is better for those of you who are online please add here your questions a while ago i wasn't able to catch up all of your questions but i hope we can continue in here so low carb nutrition 
what is important is not just the carbohydrate yes that is the emphasis because generally the public doesn't really count their carbohydrates it's like a food that we've been eating on buffet style unlimited style for so long but this time we have to be conscious whenever we take carbohydrates because they are equivalent to our blood sugar when taken too much so carbohydrates can be divided into three so that would be fiber starch and simple sugars so the fiber is usually not counted because it soluble fiber will have very very minimal sugar impact when it comes to our blood glucose whereas most of the insoluble or dietary fiber will actually not move our glucose scale significantly okay but what will matter is starch and simple sugar so starch could be complex carbohydrates that are usually found in root crops grains okay certain fruits okay but the most abundant that is something that we should really limit are the simple sugars so it could be glucose it could be fructose it could be galactose it could be lactose dextrose sucrose so all of those are simple sugar some are monosaccharide meaning single sugar like glucose or some could be disaccharide so it could be a combination of say fructose and sucrose okay but those are easily converted into blood glucose so we have to be careful whenever we take carbohydrates it's not just we thought that it's high in fiber it's already safe i received a lot of mixed emotions in response with the post that we've made in our page regarding the potatoes and then the wheat bread and what else today is the oatmeal so somewhat we've been attacking but not really attacking it's just like we are shedding real light on those foods that are usually labeled as healthy the problem with those foods being labeled as healthy is that people will tend to eat them on an unlimited basis because we have this tendency that whenever something is labeled as good we tend to overeat them and anything that's too much is really not good especially if you compare their nutrient density or the amount of nutrients that they have so say for example a potato a small potato can have 20 grams of net carbs of course that could somewhat fill your stomach but did you know that a whole large bowl of salad would just be about 20 grams still of carbohydrates or even less if you choose those lowest in carbohydrate content or net carbohydrate content so those are the important things more than calorie actually we should just really strive for nutrient dense foods why because if you always think of calorie you might actually be depriving yourself of essential nutrients but when you are thinking of real nutrient density especially those foods that are high in nutrient density but low in sugar you are maximizing the benefits so what are those so those could be animal meat products so that could be the steak that i ate this morning or the egg okay or vegetables fruits that's why they are in our caution list because even if they have a lot of nutrients they also have a lot of fructose and some like the ones we have here in the philippines mango and banana not just fructose but also in glucose it's really high in sugar so that can really directly spike our insulin if we are not too careful and remember insulin spiking three times a day is not natural okay so thank you so much for being here now aljun sabate mary ann g ann in daijin garuta hello i'm taking antibiotics dahil sa tooth infection now medyo humihilap si kumura ko is it normal lang po ba so that's one of the considerations that we said whenever you are taking medications you actually don't need to force yourself into fasting or whatever because certain medications especially the likes of clindamycin uh, could be a gastric irritant so it's not that it will really like put a hole or ulcer in your stomach 
but the, it could lead to a very bad state of stomach pain or stomach cramps or a very discomforting feeling so you if you can't take it of course you can break your fast you can just take even just an egg but try to make sure that what you are going to eat in order to somewhat appease that that irritation in your stomach would be low carb okay because if you take like simple sugars like a candy or a chocolate that could in a minute make you feel good but in the hours to come it might do you more harm than good so you have to be very careful abby navas from isabella eileen good evening Dr. can i have water kefir instead of kombucha of course you can have especially if you have it good for you if you have one so water kefir is another kind of fermented water so it's usually devoid of sugar or has a very very minimal amount of sugar because it will usually be fermented already but it will be high in probiotics that is good for our digestive system but you don't need to eat them all day every day 24 7 or seven days a week seven times you know seven days all in a week because our gut bacteria is actually thriving especially if we feed them with variety of foods so they can just live there especially if you're not fasting long so those probiotics that are usually being sold to be taken i don't know is there a seller that tells you to take that one more than once a day because even once a day actually it could be so much especially if you don't need it already because your gut flora or your microbiome in your digestive system is already healthy so maybe once in every three four days it's already enough but if you feel like you are benefiting from it very well and you have all the capacity to purchase probiotics by all means take them every day if you want to ethel alon doc i'm timad i tend to be sleepy after meals i literally sleep after eating 30 minutes only is it natural so usually food really has a thermic thermal effect there's thermic effect of food wherein 10 percent of our calories in a day you know, our ter or total energy requirement about 10 percent of that will actually be spent on digestion and food burning okay and whenever and whenever we burn our foods there is that effect that we tend to feel sleepy in order for our body to actually focus more on digestion but generally it will have more effect that somnolence that sleepy effect is more pronounced if you're taking a lot of carbohydrates at least more than what you need okay if it's if your if your limit is 50 grams a day and you're taking all that in just one sitting or in your first meal so that could be it you could actually be spiking your sugar and spiking your insulin that's why you tend to be sleepy personally i've experienced that but only during high carb meals low carb meals i cannot remember a time that i feel sleepy afterwards so unless you are really consuming so much that your body was became disabled to do anything but to shut down for you to focus on digestion so try to do mindful eating i think we've emphasized that to chew your food more in order to give time and space for your brain to actually recognize if you're already satiated or satisfied with your food vilma adlai rice accepted low glycemic index so remember we are not just looking into low glycemic index because glycemic index is actually in comparison with sugar with table sugar with glucose and its effect to our or our blood glucose so low glycemic index is just a shortcut that is lower in its effect as compared to sugar but it doesn't mean it is really low in insulin index or overall impact okay because those considered as low in glycemic index are those that have sugar spike that is less than 50 percent to the effect that is usually made by pure glucose okay pure sugar so say for example certain fruits certain like certain uh food produce like 
I'd like. It can it could be just around 40 or 45 glycemic index. But what we are actually consuming in low carb meals are the ones that doesn't have significant glycemic index at all. Maximum of 10 or 5. So what are those? So green leafy vegetables, even meat, proteins, pure egg. So those have one, zero to one gram of carbohydrates per per serving, per one hundred per one hundred grams. For example, of cabbage, you only have three grams of net carbs there. So those will have almost insignificant glycemic index at all. So adlai rice, yes you can consider that as low glycemic index but it's actually not considered as low carb just lower carb maybe so lower than regular rice than white rice than brown rice but still those are grains and so far grains are considered as part of the modern day foods that our dna actually was not capable in processing to be taken three times a day every day for the whole year so, but it's up to you. We are always pro-choice. If you feel good with eating that, by all means, you can do that. We are not against adlai rice, but we simply avoid it if we want to lower our sugar and insulin in the body whenever we follow low-carb meals, okay? Low-carb nutrition. So, hi, Lons. Hi, Ophelia. I'm taking relumin gluta. Is it okay for low-carb? So, um, if it's just the general gluta, so personally, as a doctor, I, we really don't recommend taking any glutathione, although theoretically it's a good antioxidant and a li good liver protectant. But if there's no indication, we actually don't prescribe any medicine that doesn't have exact uh, indication, especially that glutathione is now marketed mostly for skin whitening. And as a Filipino and a proud Filipino, I love my brown skin and I don't intend into changing that. But if you have an indication to take glutathione, so by all means take that. It has nothing against any diet, especially if your doctor prescribed it. So Azetrof Lugto, thank you for tagging Maricar. Danica Erin, hello. Says Nabagit nyo kanina na need mag-take supplements kung previous na karon ng kidney stone, calcium oxalate, ano pong supplements ang pwedeng i-take. So it will be different from person to person, but generally, you just avoid oxalate-rich foods. So in low-carb, there are certain foods that are high in oxalate. So that would be nuts, seeds, and certain very, very green leafy vegetables like spinach and what else? Cacao cacao and other nuts are actually high in oxalates okay so uh, supplements usually electrolytes sodium potassium citrate specifically and magnesium but of course before you take that better consult properly with a physician and if you are into low carb better also to consult with a low carb physician so not just me we also have doc fee at Atencio. we have Doc Suzette and Carnado. We also have growing numbers actually. After this Saturday's masterclass, we will have a larger roster of doctors that you can choose from. So we have Dr. Lesel Ganancial and my friends, of course, who in med school can also accommodate you, especially for those with concerns in internal medicine. So we have Dr. Dantano, we have for family medicine. I can refer you to my friends, Dr. Alberico, and of course, we have obstetrician that is dr dr kim espirito and also we have dr eunice taporco for general medicine concerns okay aljun when say possibly effect doc pagi ka naka 16 8 almost two weeks bigla ka nag 14 and three light meals at eating window it's okay it will be it will be different from person to person but if you feel like you are doing well with 1410 especially if you're already at the top of your health no more weight to lose no more fats to burn no more tumors to suppress or whatever you can really shorten it especially for males males actually can do well with with just 14 hours of fasting that could be the, their maintenance for female mostly i've seen it work maintaining on 16 to 18 hours of fasting so it will be different from person to person only you can tell if you are doing well with it okay 
Corazon Mascarinas. Doc, good evening. Papa ko po, naglo-low carb. He's diabetic type 2. Pero nag-stop mag-low carb kasi tumaas daw po BP niya, especially sa umaga. Nang normal lang ba na mangyari yun? It's normal if you are not doing it right. That is without proper supplementation. And of course, proper guidance when it comes to medications. Because certain medications can have certain effects. And as what we've emphasized before, most medications are actually given under the presumption that the person is going to take three high carb meals a day so not taking that might have certain side effects and that could be blood pressure fluctuations but it doesn't mean high low carb is not for them it's just that low carb should be started with proper medical guidance okay so i suggest you consult first because it would be such a waste for the benefits that you could possibly have if you only do it right okay so ray michael tolosa two months of low carb from 200 pounds to 100 to uh, 200 blood sugar to 100 to 125 ano po pwede gawin para pa so i don't know what you're doing exactly but that's already a very good way that uh, the, a good start of lowering it from 200 to 100 to 125 so usually if you check that in but in the morning and that you want to lower it you can check your dinner maybe you've it, eaten somewhat a large dinner or comparison maybe too much carbohydrate or maybe too late in time so that's why we recommend doing circadian fasting that is eating your last meal in a day just before sundown and see if that will work gabriel quito black coffee with cinnamon will break a fast pot it will depend which ones you follow but generally uh it could be under clean fasting as long as there's no sugar in it and cinnamon is also considered to be good actually even for autophagy and uh, better metabolism make sure your black coffee is plain no sugar no cream so lunch maximum eggs to eat in a day but taking concentrated omega-3 supplement thanks much so nobody can say what what is the maximum eggs to eat in a day if you will only base on the carbohydrate content so each egg is just one gram of net carbs so if you have 20 grams of net carbs so that's 20 eggs but if you are con thinking about the overall fat content of the eggs so each egg will have around six to seven grams of fats in it so uh taking like 20 eggs will already give you like 120 to 150 grams of fats so and that's something that you don't need as well and when it comes to proteins each egg will have six to seven grams of proteins per piece so if you're thinking of proteins that you need about 70 grams of proteins in a day so you will have you can eat as much as 10 eggs in a day so it will be up to you so the question is are you willing to eat just eggs the whole day for sustainability sake we usually do or advise not just solely dependent on eggs of course egg is one of our best staples especially that it's cheap yet it is nutritious and it's also filling but we have to make our low carb life as sustainable as possible by being creative by having some fun when it comes to our palate so that we can enjoy our food more so generally you can have an egg as much as you want but anything that's too much is also not good if we can if you can get eggs organic raised farm raised or the ones that are free range so all the better but if it's just the regular eggs that's not far that's not organic so maybe you want to limit it okay because the nut nutrients in those eggs may be limited and they might have certain degree of inflammation because they are not that they are not organically raised they are not that natural when they were created most eggs now are being laid even without mating without real uh, pregnancy but just hormonal induction so better safe if you will ask dr bird he usually will limit to just four to five eggs okay personally usually we can eat around four to six eggs in a day 
Okay. So, Bing, uh, where are the other comments? Haven't seen it. So, Rowena, Doc, what should I do if I want to be able to keep my weight to about 50 kilograms? So, what do you mean? Are you already on your goal weight? So, you, do you want to maintain? So, if you want to maintain, you just continue to do what you are doing right now. So, if you are still losing weight with whatever your schedule is, is right now, so you can try to just lower down your fasting schedule or you may increase your protein intake okay or you can increase your meal frequency in a day so instead of example maybe eating two meals a day in a six hour or eight hour window period maybe you can try to eat three meals but still on the same eating window okay so jc hello lunch follow up what is intake of more meat and beef not prohibited in positive ANA profile test SLE so it will be up to you because I understand that most doctors will actually disagree with me whenever we whenever I say that I don't limit red meat for those with SLE because patients that I manage with SLE who have not eaten red meat for so long still are maintaining the same medications but I have patients that I've I've allowed to eat red meat as long as it's still in moderation but I technically really limit their carbohydrate intake especially the non nutritious carbohydrates which are bread pasta noodles rice starch those root crops those are not really that nutritious you can have more nutrients with carbs like green leafy vegetables like eggplant like okra like all those okay so you are better off taking other sources of carbohydrates and you can enjoy your meat if you want to but individual person might have different reactions so I, that's why i advise to make a food diary so that whenever you don't feel so good you can always look back from for 24 to 48 hours that passed and see for yourself how it actually maybe you did eat something that is not good for you or something that your body is not so suited okay ching how to eliminate allergies so allergies would be thought before to be innate from person to person but personally it is somewhat fueled by inflammation and inflammation is primarily fueled, flu fueled by our food choices so highly inflammatory foods are mostly high in sugar high in carbohydrates but at the same time there are zero carbohydrate sugar that are highly inflammatory as well so that would include toxic oils seed oils like canola sunflower what else safflower rapeseed oil mm, what kind of oil so many oils that are actually not so good so whenever we talk about oil, just focus on coconut oil for cooking. You can also use lard and tallow. So those are animal fats if you have. But for me, I have a hard time looking where to get those. So we just are contented and happy with our refined coconut oils for cooking. And also olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, usually used for raw salads. Okay, But for my salad, actually, I am more fond of using lemon and maybe butter and just salt lemon and salt or apple cider vinegar and salt i'm happy with that already so grace that fast can you clarify eggs causing inflammation so what's the maximum egg intake so again we are not asked looking into maximum egg intake because it will be different from person to person so if you are eating eggs that are organic so it could be safe i know a cancer survivor who is eating 10 eggs 10 organic eggs a day and he never had a relapse on his cancer for more than 10 years now okay but there are other those who are quite sensitive with egg whenever they ate eggs they could have certain types of some sort of sensitivity so you will have to know for yourself which ones are you sensitive you can try so basically for us we eat four to six eggs mostly in a day but not every day as well sometimes we just eat one egg sometimes no egg at all so you have to know which one is your limit that's why you have to know your own you have to make your own food diary so that you will know which you are most sensitive so ideally 
when it comes to eggs, you have to be creative so that you can be sustainable in this way of life. Do not just keep on eating egg. People think who are those who are into low carb and keto are just eating eggs all day. So that is something that is not nice and something that is not sustainable or else you will feel you will feel aversive eventually you will no longer love low carb simply because you've been eating just eggs so try to be creative there are so many other foods out there okay hi d king good evening but sugar content and diabetesol yes that is very true dodge bell hi doc okay we use coconut oil in cooking ideally i don't recommend reusing coconut oil so what we usually do whenever we cook in coconut oil we just make it to a minimum not really floating in there so unless it's uh, the recipe really looks for deep fried but generally we'll minimize it so that whatever cooking oil is there we just consume okay so that's that Brace that fast. Antibiotics ruins our good bacteria too in our gut, so probiotics necessary to replace it. Yes. And Eileen, yes, thank you. You're welcome. SP Manapat. Good evening. Can I take black coffee? No sugar during fasting time? Yes, of course. You are free to do so. Try to limit your coffee not more than three cups a day. And your last coffee intake, eight hours before your intended sleeping time if you don't want to ruin your circadian rhythm okay Algin, follow-up question will i makita na yogurt or probiotic drinks okay raba ang probiotic supplements it's okay so pila ka days interval it will be up to you i said if you feel like you want to take it every day that's good but for me i don't find the need i don't have the need to take it every day especially that whenever i take so for example i take kimchi or i take kombucha this day and then the next day i'm eating vegetables so i'm sure i know that the fiber in those vegetables are feeding the good bacteria that's already in there and then the next day maybe i can eat again or not so it will be different from person to person but generally you can take that probiotics are generally safe and also good so if you want to be sure that your probiotics are all filled up and filled in so you can take them every day especially if you have the budget to take them go so in daigaruta yes i have yogurt spot yeah it doesn't need to be just yogurts okay plain yogurts are good you can also have kombucha you can also have kimchi but the thing that you can actually do in here in the philippines that you can do also on your own very very simply is to make your own sauerkraut so sauerkraut is just fermented cabbage it's very very easy to do you just have to trust yourself that you're doing it right and it's really good it's like it's like achara uh, but without the sweet taste okay so it's a good appetizer so i said adekon kapeng barako po dok okay lang ba yun inumin yes as long as it's plain black no sugar no cream Daniel, the Los Reyes, are you allowed but to drink zero calorie soft drinks, beverages when in low carb and low carb diet? So it will be different from page and groups that you follow, but usually in Life Without Rice and in my practice, I really don't recommend taking anything that's zero calorie sweetened drinks. And the use of zero calorie sweeteners as well are under our caution list. So whenever we say it is on our caution list, you have to be very mindful and cautious whenever you take them. It's not that you can't take them, but we discourage taking them because even if they are not affecting your blood sugar, not affecting your insulin, but it can affect your brain and you may not be able to stop certain cravings, changes in our brain that makes us crave foods that are actually not nutritionally needed. So those are the things that we avoid. The mental and psychological effect of those sweetened drinks. Artificially sweetened zero calorie drinks. Joey Raphael, does LC harmful for expecting mom? Is it allowed to drink ACV in water? That's very, very minimal. That's really okay. Just a tablespoon of vinegar in water, in a glass of water, that's very minimal. And low carb, why would it be harmful? I have no idea how it can be harmful. 
because as what we've seen low carb is actually very natural even for mothers even for pregnant women by nature there's no such thing as desserts as sugar as table sugar as high carb meal or even honey being taken every day so those are the things that are making our food high in carbohydrates and by nature it didn't occur until just the last 2000 years as compared to the last 2 million years that we have survived as humans by evolution this may sound surprising for some but for the students of our low carb nutrition and fasting master class you already know this by heart okay so my meloria doc please discuss about breastfeeding moms can i go back to low carb diet of course you can always go back to low carb diet the only ones that are not really indicated or needed for those pregnant and breastfeeding moms are intentional fasting you don't ever need to force yourself into fasting but also remember that you that being a pregnant woman or breastfeeding mom is also not an excuse to overeat so eat the right foods at the right time whenever you have the urge to eat just don't simply go into simple sugars and desserts okay so carmela calatrava can i take revicon and immunopro together on lcif so other supplements that are actually not essential for low carb nutrition you may opt to take them if you want to if they make you feel good try to take them during your eating window as a supplement by their name it should be like part of your meal so an extension of nutrients from your food but ideally in an ideal setting we should take our nutrients all of those vitamins and minerals directly coming from our food Eileen, I ferment my own water kefir before it is quite tiring as they grow quickly and they have to be fed daily with molasses I belong in a group of fermenters and their members who have reversed their diabetes because of it wow that's really good so that's uh we have gilbert salvador and chloe learning while cooking thank you bcb avishet gozwami hello thank you for being here aj albiato uh, let's see i think i accidentally end the live video a while ago so i i almost did it again sorry so Teresa Sinta de Baker. Ah, wait. AJ Abiato Ipil. Okay na po ba mag low carb diet may liver disease? It will be a question of what kind of liver disease, but generally low carb nutrition doesn't have any contraindication. Okay? It's just avoiding simple sugars. It's just avoiding the unessential carbohydrates. Okay? We are focusing on a low carb diet that is more on nutrition, nutrient dense foods okay that is devoid or with minimal amount of sugar that is simply what we do and there's no contraindication with it liver disease it could be fat liver it could be liver cancer it could be what liver cirrhosis and hepatitis all those even certain kinds of uh, kind of viral diseases doesn't have a contraindication with low carb if not they can actually help make the immune system better and actually lower the load or lower the problem that we give to our liver so Teresa Sinto for those fasting eight and six it's better to eat three times with small amounts or just eat once with amount like OMAD so I feel bloated when I do OMAD so it will be up to you usually if you are st if you still want to lose weight sometimes OMAD is good but if you no longer w need to lose weight I saw your transformation photo and congratulations so thank you for sharing that in our low carb feasting and fasting community if you want to maintain like so if, for example preserve your muscles you can actually do a three small meals of protein loaded foods during the, your eating window to make sure that you get enough proteins on your window you, on your eating window so is turmeric high in oxalate um not sure but somewhat i haven't seen turmeric in the list of high in oxalates uh but it's high in curcumin which is a good which is a good uh compound we have to check on that so savior de sosa what is your advice on omad in regards to macronutrients for example man can digest 30 to 35 grams of protein per meal which is not enough for our body weight which leads to loss of muscles and nutrition deficiency etc so that is also related to what i said a while ago 
if you still want to lose weight you can do OMAD but yes it is true you may not be able to get all of the protein that you need for the day so OMAD we have different definitions but for us we actually follow also the ones I think it was from Gene Stephens uh, OMAD definition so one meal a day could just be one single meal a day or it could be two light meals in five hour window period maximum okay so with the five hour window period that is actually a minimum of fasting hour of 19 hours and a maximum of eating window that is five hours so you can eat two meals there so if you want to ensure that you are getting enough protein you can divide your meal into two light meals within a five hour window period and technically by the definition that we follow you can, are still following oman so that's still a one meal a day because that two meals even if it's dispersed in two meals but in a five hour window period you will still be able to reset your insulin comes the next day especially if you are sticking to low carb so the benefit of OMAD when it comes to weight loss even in that two light meals can still be maximized but you will be able to retain your needed proteins to preserve your muscle mass okay Kat Sanchez, what does it mean? High ketones in urine and doing LCIF for two months. So high ketones in urine simply means that you have ketones in your urine being excreted and most likely you must be in ketosis. So when you are in ketosis, you are fueling in fats and supposedly it shouldn't be high. Although at first, during your first period of being in ketosis, you will be excreting a lot of those because you are not, not yet fat adapted, meaning your body, even if, if it's producing ketones, not everybody, not everything in your body, in your system, in your cells are accepting ketones as energy. So it takes a while for them to be fat adapted or keto adapted. So ideally, as you become more advanced into low carb and you are more fat adapted, you can now lower your excretion of your urinary ketones because your body will now tend to conserve them knowing that th that is now your primary source of fuel okay so if you are still excreting a lot of ketones in your urine you might want to check your food you might be going on and off ketosis and when you are on and off ketosis you might actually be going out and not really fully fat adapting because generally two months supposedly is already enough for you to be to be fat adapted so try to make sure that there's no cheating there's no low carb or high carb cheats in between of those two months okay so jelly hello eleanor ramos pwede po ba magtanong tungkol po sa cabbage rice araw araw so it will be up to you the only issue we have with cabbage is that most cabbage are not organically raised so it's usually loaded with lots of pesticides we, i have an aunt who used to work in the department of agriculture and she told me that the moment that cabbage are already forming into a bud it is now being regularly sprayed with five to seven kinds of pesticides just so it can grow into a full ball of cabbage that we buy into this very beautiful flawless cabbage so even cooking can no longer remove those pesticides so we don't know how it can affect us but definitely those are not natural for our body to take in so to be safe you might want to not really eat those every day or you can better have certain options limit them wash them thoroughly and also make sure that you are not consuming so much even cabbage also is high in uh, what we call as FODMAPs so that's a fermented oligo dye monosaccharide groups that can lead to bloating and certain degree of discomfort or dyspepsia in some who are sensitive to FODMAPs so limiting cabbage to three fourth cup a day maximum is deemed safe but if you feel like you are doing well with cabbage every day unlimited so it will be up to you as again we are pro-choice okay but we hope that we can know this at least for us to be more sensitive with our how with how our body responds to those kinds of foods 
So we have Feh J. De La Cruz. Good evening. Mian Mian. Doc, I am doing low carb na po. 16 to 18 hours fasting. Taking potassium, fish oil, magnesium supplements. Sobrang thanks to you po talaga. Bumaba na ng insulin ko from 300 to 180 na lang now. Wow, that's so good. Congratulations. Kaya lang yung fatty liver ko, meron pa rin. Ramdam ko, mapait every morning pagising. Is that normal po ba? So, how long have you been doing this? Remember, sometimes if we already have fatty liver, that's actually happened over years, over decades sometimes of poor eating habits. So, rushing ourselves into healing is not really good. So, let's give our time the let's give our body the time that it needs to heal and make sure you provide it with necessary support that is sticking to our nutritious low carb and also with your intended fasting schedule so congratulations with your progress so elizabeth diana neyes martinez is it good to drink ginger tea fresh boiled two times a day every day so far ginger is one of the most common uh, herbal drinks here in the Philippines and our lolos, lolas have never had any problem with ginger or salabat. I hope I can drink that but my palate cannot seem to love ginger but for those of you who love ginger, congratulations, you are reaping all the good be benefits from ginger. So our valet, hello po doctora, pwede po ba coconut milk everyday, gano po kadami? So per cup of coconut milk, I think it will have around 6 grams of net carb so if you have a 20 gram limit so you shouldn't go over four cups in a day rosalino rojo hello lerma reyes mag whey protein how about whey protein so if you want to take whey protein especially if you are working out that's okay but you have to compute it and part of your way of your protein allowance for the day okay otherwise you might be overdoing your protein if you are taking more protein than your body needs you will actually probably lose being into being in ketosis or being fat adapted because too much protein can also be converted into sugar through the process of gluconeogenesis because our proteins cannot be stored easily in our body unless you are a bodybuilder and you've been doing that for years already okay Gisela Rosales Arroyo, hi again. For people with cancer, do you have different food lists for them? So I don't, there's only one food list. But of course, for cancer, it will be different on what types of cancer. But generally, with cancer, there's, there's this protocol that we, we, we have to starve the cancer cells. So it could not, it could be still, the safe list can apply. But the quantity of certain food there as compared to others might differ. So it will be different from patient to patient, especially the preference and the current nutritional status of the patient. And of course, its method of eating. Sometimes other cancer patients can no longer, can no longer swallow. So some can no longer, are already on tube feeding. So those are factors that we have to consider as well. So, Raya Zarina, hello. Leze, how to treat keto rash and hive. So, it will be usually temporary. So, make sure you are not sweating, you are not, you are not exposed to very high heat because sweat can exacerbate that. And try to look into your food. Maybe you are not eating safe keto, safe low carb might be a lot of inflammatory keto like dairies okay certain nuts and of course to some extent eggs and chicken especially if not organic so try to make sure it's usually within what you're doing with what you're eating it's mostly noted on those that are doing dirty keto so something that is not evident much in life without rice because we don't promote that Girly de la Cruz, thank you. Elizabeth Escobar, thank you for a good evening. Carmen Ang, late kakatapos ng po ng trabaho, watching from Japan. We have so many friends now in Japan. Crystal Ramos, case of allergic rhinitis and conjunctivitis. I've been on that road for before low carb. I've been maintaining medicines for that for five years. Only fasting and low carb healed it. So, but I'm still having allergic attacks. Try to see. Maybe you're consuming hidden sugars. You because for me, I still have episodes. I know I've eaten 
more than what I need if I have those allergic attacks, okay? So sometimes even keto treats, even zero calorie sweeteners can have that trigger for me. I'm already so, so insulin sensitive that even zero calorie sweeteners can already trigger my allergic conjunctivitis. I know it's too bad, but I've learned to accept it and I've learned to appreciate it that it's my body's way of telling me not to go that road again. So we only have five minutes left. We can see how we can check here. Cantaloupe and watermelon high in glycemic index. Actually, the, those water-loaded f uh, fruits are not that high when it comes to sugar content. But you just have to make sure you are eating less of it. Okay, so maybe half a cup or just a slice. Okay, because these may be low in sugar overall because it's very high in water content but it's also very easy to overeat like a whole big big chunk of uh, imagine how watermelon are being served here in the philippines it's one one half moon of uh, watermelon and that's already too much so quantity matters cherry lilani good evening and a uh, question, Lorene Coconut MCT, how often and how often should I take it? So it's not essential actually, especially MCT oil. But if you want to like be more adapted when it comes to ketosis and you want to increase your, say for example, brain activity because it is helpful when it comes to, to brain functioning, if you are already fat adapted, so that can help one tablespoon a day that can already do wonders if you are doing well with it and if you are okay with it personally i haven't had the need to have it although i've always had it it's just that i think i've taken that twice or three times three days in a row and after that i forgot about it and i never seem seem to miss to miss it so i'm good even without it i as you know i am fond of natural ketosis and therapeutic ketosis and therapeutic fasting the more natural the better and by nature mct oil is not present all year round so evelyn suiko 57 years old diabetic two months ago 260 to 280 you sugar co been lcif religiously since march uh, 12 hours fasting fbs 173 walang cheat talaga yung carb ko i gave this net diary to check on my food intake Okay, lang ba yung FBS ko? So, that's, I wouldn't say okay, but that is definitely better than 260 or 280. But it can still, it can be improved, okay? So, but for those who are uh, diagnosed already with illness, with maintenance medications, a proper consultation is advised because, especially if you want to improve your fasting, your fasting window of just 12 hours. 12 hours is just the minimum. It's good that you're already used to low carb, so maybe it's time that you can now move on and improve on your on your intermittent fasting window, okay? So Rowena, can I take vitamins every day like collagen, vitamin C, fish oil, multivitamins? Uh, fish oil, vitamin C are essential nutrients. Collagen is not an essential nutrient. But if you feel more beautiful with collagen, you can take them, of course. Try to take them during your eating window as part of your meal, okay? Evelyn Suiko, Baron Tabar, tried to make a consultation schedule with you, waiting for our reply pod. Sorry for that. We are really, really very uh, quite booked until end of May, but try to, to send a message with my clinic manager. Our page actually in this, we can no longer accommodate all the questions. So we just drive you to our, if it's urgent, uh, you can contact our our clinic manager so facebook.com slash alvin dot rojo okay so that's my brother and he is also managing the clinic our facebook page here this dr josephine grace you are rojo page we can no longer i'm so sorry that's why we have q a because we can no longer attend to the influx of messages that's coming every day but thank you so much for the appreciation we only have one minute left so let's see let's see if we have one question here so la marquez keep what hi doc your thoughts about chicken oil when you cook the chicken skin in the air fryer can you use that oil from chicken skin i do the same to the oil i get after frying the pork thank you so chicken oil is mostly 
omega-6 okay so omega-6 technically is an essential oil but we no longer need so much of scent of omega-6 simply because it is everywhere we are consuming omega-6 as more than we need way way more than we need and limiting consciously limiting our omega-6 intake is actually good okay but if you want to enjoy the the oil from chicken skin you may do so but just know that you have to take it with caution and not on unlimited buffet style level okay so i think that's it uh, we are already time out so i'll see you again this friday and thank you especially to our participants in low carb and fasting master class uh, 115 100 more than 100 students there and they are going to graduate this saturday thank you so much everybody for the other questions try to keep them and i will see you this coming friday that's all for today stay low carb always guys so that we will all stay safe maraming maraming salamat po good night and have a blessed week ahead bye bye